Good morning, guys. How's it going? Boy, do I have some videos to knock out today. Whew, I got stuff in Romans. I got a couple of chapters in Proverbs to finish up that playlist. I've got parables I need to knock out. But I got two videos here that I need to knock out first. And this one is going to be on Daniel 8. And it is about the coming Iran war, what we have going on there. There is a prophecy in Daniel 8 that specifically talks about this event happening. And there's some interesting statements made in Daniel 8 by an angel that is explaining this to him. A lot of people say this is something that's already happened, happened a long time ago. Well, technically Iran didn't exist a long time ago. But the angel makes a statement in here that puts it all in perspective. Now, if you guys really want to get into something interesting, watch the video I upload after this. <laughs> it's about the Sabbath. I have squared away a ton of scripture to show exactly what we need to know about the Sabbath. Because people are just condemning people. Oh, you don't celebrate it on the Saturday? Oh, you're a heretic, a false prophet, a false teacher, a false convert, unsaved, not going in the rapture, going to be beheaded during it. Oh, come on, guys, you're killing me. And the thing is, they're not celebrating it either. And they don't even realize it. But in their attempt to become higher and more elevated than other Christians, they've condemned themselves. Likewise, there's people that talk about it on Sunday. Oh, we got to be together. we got to celebrate the Sabbath. we got to be together on Sunday. Well, it, no, we don't. It's not a requirement. I'm going to make a lot of people mad. But I have a... a whole host of scripture that will very clearly describe what this all means. And there's some key words and some key phrases in these scriptures that are going to clarify this completely for everyone. At least I hope it does. If not, you can email me. Okay, so Daniel 8, the Iran War. Let's start in Daniel 8. One. Let's read a little bit and we're going to see where the Spirit leads. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, Daniel, after that which appeared to me at the first. Now we know what the first one was, that was Daniel 7. And that was the uh, vision that, the same vision that John had in the book of Revelations. Chapter 4 or 5 and I think 6. And I saw in the vision, and when I saw, I saw in Susa, the citadel, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in the vision, and I saw, and I was at Ulai Canal. Where are these places at? Well, we're going to look it up. So we have Susa and the province of Elam. You guys are going to see how I find all this stuff. The ancient city of Susa in Iran is a worldwide treasure. The city to this day still exists. And if you look at this picture right here, there's the citadel right there. It's still there. After all this time. Okay, so he was at the he was at the Ulai Canal. Boom. There it is. The Ulai Canal. In Susa. So now we know exactly where David was. There you go. Too easy, right? Okay. Too easy. That's how simple it is to find this stuff out. There's, I run into people every single week, multiple times a week sometimes, that, well, you don't know what you're talking about. That's not what that's referring to. Well, I just Googled it and you saw me do it. It's not that hard. This isn't rocket science, guys. But I, I still got people, Ranty McRanterson is going to have to do another video. I still got people that are uh, telling me, you have no clue what you're doing, you don't know what you're talking about, well, maybe it's because you don't know how to Google things. Maybe it's because you don't know how to look things up. And there was that one guy who said, I never thought I'd see the day, this was back in 2019, I never thought I'd see the day when Google would have more uh, authority than the Bible. And I said, it doesn't, and I never said that, you said that. I said What I said is, you can Google the information and pull the truth out of the information that's present and learn about these things. Where in that statement does it say that, the, that Google has more authority than the Bible? But this guy had this whole idea in his head. It was self-elevation and pride and arrogance. That unless, only unless, you read just what's on these pages, you're not finding true information. 
wrong, completely wrong. And that's like arrogance to the nth degree. I can't. There are so many people that have deluded themselves. This isn't from other people. They've done this to themselves. But see, when you read and do your own study, you find all these things. And it very clearly paints the picture being portrayed in the Bible. Daniel 8.3, I raised my eyes and saw, and behold, so now we know where Daniel was, okay? We know that it still exists. Raised my eyes and saw, and behold, a ram standing on the bank of the canal. So he's seeing a, a picture or an allegory, a representation of what's going on. And you're going to see what the explanation of who this is uh, at near the end of the chapter. So we know we're talking about Iran, right? Make sure everybody's on the same page. Those of y'all that get it, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the ones who refuse to get it. It had two horns, and both horns were high. But one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. Who is that talking about? Didn't a horn just get killed? I saw the ram charging westward and northward and southward. Isn't Iran moving their military in those directions right now? No beast could stand before him, and there was no one who could rescue from his power. He did as he pleased and became great. As I considered, behold, a male goat came from the west, across the face of the whole earth, without touching the ground. And the goat had a conspicuous horn between his eyes. I want to point something out here. Some people think that goat is a representation of Turkey, but there's some key words here that I want to point out. First of all, he came from the west. I believe Turkey is a little south, and Turkey actually is Asia Minor. Um, so that kind of makes it not that it. But it came across the face of the whole earth. Guys, there's only one country I know that does that. America. Now, I could be wrong. I'm just pointing out what I'm seeing here. But let's keep reading. And the goat had a conspicuous horn between his eyes. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. Trump. <laughs> Chapter, or verse 6. He came to the ram with two horns, which I had seen standing on the bank of the canal, and he ran at him in his powerful wrath. What do we see happening right now? Guys. I could be wrong, I'm just reading it. I saw him come close to the ram, and he was enraged against him and struck the ram and broke his two horns. One horn has just been broken because Suleimani was what? He was the second in command. And the ram had no power to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and trampled on him, and there was no one who could rescue the ram from his power. Then the goat became exceedingly great. But when he was strong, the great horn was broken. And instead of it, there came up four conspicuous horns toward the four winds of heaven. Guys, when I read this, to me, what it's saying is the leader of that nation is going to get taken out. Or, not leader, but government of that nation is going to get taken out. And four governments are going to come up in its place could be referring to some kind of destruction. I don't know. But clearly there's a war going on with Iran here and where Iran gets their their face stomped in. But you have to figure out who the other goat is. So let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Out of one of them came a little horn, uh-oh, which grew exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. What's the glorious land? Israel? Who is this? This sounds like the Antichrist. It grew great even to the host of heaven, and some of the hosts, listen, some of the host uh, and some of the stars it threw down to the ground and trampled them. Doesn't the dragon, which represents the Antichrist or Satan, with his tail drag a third of the stars to the ground with him? There it is, right there. Just reading, it became great, even as great as the prince of the host. And the regular burnt offering was taken away from him, and the place of his sanctuary was thrown was overthrown. Is this not speaking about something happening in the tribulation? That's the same description given to what's going to happen in the tribulation. And there was a guy today, I was reading comments, and there was a guy today, he was saying, oh no, that happened 
twenty or 2,500 years ago. Like, um, no, don't think so, dude. Because there's a key phrase in here that's going to tell you that. And a host will be given over to it together with a regular burnt offering because of transgression. And it will be, it will throw through to the ground and it will act and prosper. Then I heard a holy one speaking. And another holy one said to the one who spoke, For how long is the vision concerning the regular burnt offering, the transgression that makes desolate, <clears throat> and the giving over of the sanctuary and host to be trampled underfoot? This is speaking about stuff from the book of Revelations. Exactly this almost identical wording. And he said to me, For twenty-three hundred evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary shall be restored to its rightful state. 2,300 days. Because an evening and a morning is a day. Remember in Genesis? And the evening and the morning was the first day. 2,300 days. Six point three years, almost seven year tribulation. So this is going to happen. Oh, here's a book right here at Walmart. Twenty three hundred days of hell. The two witnesses, <laughs> Joseph's seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Wow. I'm wondering, and and I actually saw some stuff on this uh, two days ago about the seven years of good and seven years of bad. A lot of people are wondering if we're in the seven years of good right now. I kind of think maybe there might be seven years coming of good. And then the seven years of bad. Remember I told you I think we're going the rapture is going to happen. Then there's going to be a time a, fr a frame time frame and then the tribulation will start. The Bible seems to indicate that. When you see specific stuff like this mentioned, it really makes prophecy pop. So now here's the interpretation of the vision. Verse 15 in Daniel 8. When I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I sought to understand it. And behold, there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. That's an angel. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Uli, and it called, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was frightened and fell on my face. But he said to me, understand, O son of man, that the vision is for the time of the end. The time of the end. When is the time of the end? Well, it wasn't 2,500 years ago, that's for sure. But see, when you don't read, you don't get that kind of stuff. People are not listening or reading. They're not paying attention to what's going on. They're not taking their time to look for key phrases and key words that give you the secrets of all this stuff. So clearly, by this one verse, this prophecy is for our time right now. What do we see going on right now? And when he had spoken to me, I fell into a deep sleep with my face to the ground, but he touched me and made me stand up. He said, Behold, I will make known to you what shall be at the latter end of the indignation. Remember the 2300 days? It was 6.3 years, latter end of the indignation. What's the indignation? The seven year tribulation. Remember the verse we covered yesterday in that two hour video about the rapture? Going to hide in your going to hide in your, close the doors and hide in your rooms. It's a, it's a, it's a proverb. And hide in your rooms till the indignation is past. Pre-trib rapture. For it refers to the appointed time of the end. As for the ram that you saw with two horns, these are the kings of Media and Persia. Now who's Media and Persia? Both Media and Persia were ancient kingdoms, and what is now Iran. The Medes emerged as a united kingdom during the period of the Neo Assyrian Empire. So both of them are in Iran. So is part of Iran going to rise up and sweep over the rest of it? I don't know. Did say he was going to sweep over the whole earth. 
So here's media right in the middle and Persia's down below it. Media now, I believe that is Saudi Arabia, guys. No, here's Saudi Arabia down below it. So there it is right there. Pretty interesting. We see all this stuff happening. And the goat... So that, it, that was Iran right there. And the goat is the king of Greece. And the great horn between his eyes is the first king. Now, when you, if you read verse 21 and just say, uh, okay, I'm going to take that as this is the first king of this becoming a nation. And now you go look for a nation that where they got their first king from. How many people have heard them referring to Trump as the first king? The case for making Donald Trump America's first king. Jimmy Kimmel, let's make Donald Trump the first king. Donald Trump, first king of America. Is Trump going to be the last president of U.S. and first king? I'm just reading what it says. How long has Greece been around? At that time, when Daniel was around, how long was Greece around? Wasn't the first king? They've had a lot of kings. Who else was a king of Greece? Cyrus? Didn't they refer to him in the beginning of his term as King Cyrus? Or like King Cyrus, who was a king of Greece? King Donald Trump, the first of America. Trump for king. Stephen King on Donald Trump. How much, how do men, such men rise? First king. The case for making Donald Trump king of America. Trump, seventh king, serves a short time, then Obama being the eighth king. He wouldn't be the seventh king, he'd be the first king. Just reading what's there. Could that be talking about America and Trump? Because Greece or Greeks were referred to as Gentiles in the New Testament. There is no Jew or Greek. Well, Greek would have been everybody else in the world. Jews being the isolated people. Just connecting dots, you guys. Just connecting dots. Y'all do your own research on this. But that stands out to me. Especially after I've heard other stuff being said. First king? Wait a minute. There's only one first king that's ever been mentioned anywhere. And that's now. I mean, there were first kings back then. But some of your first kings, they all came about way back before Daniel was even born. Three, four, five thousand years ago. Just saying. Just saying. We're seeing things happening in the world right now, you guys. <clears throat> as for the horn that was broken in place of which four others arose four kingdoms shall arise from this nation but not with his power how would that be does that mean there's going to be a breaking apart of America if this is even talking about America now I could be wrong on this and at the latter end of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their limit, a king of bold face, one who understands riddles, shall arise. Who's this? So we're getting a time frame established here. And the goat is the king of Greece, and the great horn between his eyes is the first king. As for the horn that was broken, in place of which four others arose, four kingdoms shall rise from this nation, but not with his power. I'm thinking America is going to break apart for some reason. Something's going to happen to bust it up. But Trump could be the king that this is talking about. I know Texas will become a kingdom all by itself. They've already got their paperwork drawn up. In fact, they filed several lawsuits against Obama for not letting them succeed from the nation. And at the latter end of the kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their limit, what would be the limit? Everybody. <laughs> that means we would all be gone. A king of bold face, one who understands riddles, shall arrive. Bold face, fierce continence. Antichrist will have a fierce continence. 
His power shall be great, verse 24, but not by his own power. Isn't he supposed to be given power? And he shall cause fearful destruction and shall succeed in what he does and destroy mighty men and the people who are the saints. Make war against the saints. By his cunning he shall make deceit prosper under his hand, and in his own mind he shall become great. Without warning he shall destroy many, and he shall even rise up against the prince of princes, which is Jesus Christ, and he shall be broken, but by no human hand. The vision of the evenings and the mornings that has been told is true, but seal up the vision. He just said that, that those days, that 2300 days is true, for it refers to many days from now. And then Daniel got sick in the last verse. Guys, we're giving a specific time frame here. We're seeing things that are going to unfold in a 6.3 year time frame. Is that the tribulation or the time before the tribulation? A lot of things have to happen to get everything ready for the tribulation to happen. If we're raptured this year, it could be six or seven years before things kick off to the actual tribulation. It's possible. Don't know, but it's possible. But when you see stuff like this, this should give you pause. This should cause you to go, whoa, wait a minute. I'm seeing that in the world right now. What else are we seeing in the world right now that the Bible talks about? Guys, this is it. We're at the end. I have no doubt in my mind, no doubt, we are at the end. That this is it. I said back in 2019, if we made it past the end of 2019, I would be surprised. I'm surprised. But in light of new information, I'm thinking, hmm, it may actually be a couple of more months and then we're out of here. I don't know. I can't even pretend to tell you guys I know what day it's going to be. And I will not set a date like a bunch of people have done. But when I read stuff like this, it sure tells me what time it is in the world. And guys, this right here, we're seeing happen right now in the world. It is unfolding in the world. Because who is Iran mad at right now? Who are they fighting with right now? Well, ain't nobody over there. It's us. And then we got stuff like this popping up. Just saying, guys. Just saying. And the great horn between his eyes is the first king. And that's that term, first king, isn't given as a title. He is the first king, the first king of this nation. America's never had a king. It's always been presidents. Right there, bam. If that was a title, it would be capitalized F, capitalized K, and it's not. Little details like this, guys, make me excited because when I see this stuff and I see what's going on in the world, it's like, wow, how could we be here much longer than this? Watch Woman 65 did a video uh, yesterday evening. Things that she pointed out. Go look at what she found. Goes right along the same lines as this. Guys. Guys. This is it. It's done. We're over. It, it's all over with. We're literally waiting for the bus to get here. In a manner of speaking. <coughs> Keep looking up and stay in prayer. And be excited. Because I was kind of excited in 2019 at a few times. But there was still some apprehension. I'm not, I don't have any apprehension anymore. I'm like, wow, okay, this is it. And we know that whatever happens, it's to our betterment, right? We're with Christ. He's not going to let us do go through things that we're not appointed to. Remember, we're not appointed to wrath? So at God's perfect timing, he'll tell him, go get him. And we're out of here. And we're going to go get to go be with our Lord in heaven, in glory. I get to see him and our Holy Father face to face. You get to see all the other saints get to see each other. Some of us haven't met face to face, see each other. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. Can't even tell you how excited I am and how energized I am at seeing stuff like this. And then seeing this stuff over here and it's like, wait a minute. And nobody ever talked about anybody being the first king of the United States until now. Cool stuff. So go read Daniel 8 for yourself. See what you find. The Holy Spirit that's within you may show you something different. But I'm going to tell you one thing. That jumps out. That really jumps out at me. Okay, I'm going to leave you with that because I want to get this other video going for the Sabbath. It's uh, 
it's uh, going to be a little long because there's a lot of scripture. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.